Good morning, guys. This is your local neighborhood hope dealer. <laughs> oh, man. Down here in San Diego, just enjoying my life, guys. Waking up early, man. It's Sunday, guys. It's a day of rest, all right? It's a day of rest. You got to be able to, um, you know, I, I go to church today. This is my life. I go to church today. I worship with my wife. We go out to lunch, you know what I'm saying? But we continue to get our rest in on Sunday because we have to deal with a lot of things that come our way throughout the week. You know what I'm saying? So today's a good day, guys. Let's just bow our heads in prayer, and then we'll get started on the topic today, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Lord, 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 thank you so much for coming into my life, showing me the truth as I chased the lie as hard as I could. Now I go hard for the truth, Father. You filled me up from the inside out, Father. Please watch over all human beings on this planet. Please have a breakthrough through their um, soul, spirit, so they can finally walk with you, Father, and not wander no more on, on the planet, Father. We thank you, Lord, Father. Please have another man help another man, another woman help another woman, just everybody helping each other so we can continue to walk in the right direction, Father. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do, Father, for when everybody walked away that you're a God that stays. And we're so happy for that, Father. And we love you so much, Father. And thank you, Lord, for the story of the prodigal son, which I'm going to share right now. And, and, and just thank you, Lord, for that parable, Father. And, and, and we love you so much and everything that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's up, guys? Today, I want to share about the, uh, a little story that I heard in the Salvation Army that um, uh, one of the uh, employees there, um, Kevin Carter, Kyle Carter, um, shared, and it was just amazing. It was about the prodigal son. It was about two brothers, um, and, and, and one of them got an inheritance, right? He wanted his inheritance from his father, so he went out there with all this money to go see what the world had to offer, and he ended up, uh, you know, spending it on all bad, you know, prostitute, uh, just anything bad, um, pleasurable, he went and spent it on until he was finally dead broke, and he was finally in a pig trough, guys, and when he was in this pig trough, he finally, he, he had the gift of desperation, and then and, 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 and the mustard seed went into his heart, and he thought, man, he goes, the servants at my father's place place they get treated better than I'm getting treated and he made the decision to go home guys and when he made the decision to go home his father threw a celebration right and the other brother was jealous but the reason why the father uh threw a celebration was because he know he knew his son was back for good that he went out there and he saw how bad it was and now he's come back and he knew his son would be back forever and that was the reason for the celebration guys and I can relate that to my life all right I can relate that to my life because I know that early on, uh, you know, the planet, it gave me a lot of uh, opportunity to chase pleasure. I had money. I had uh, uh, material things. I had everything that the world had to offer. And I went and I continued to chase pleasures and I continued to go out there. So I walked away from the Father. I walked away from the Lord, right? Until where did I end up? Pretty much in the pig trough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ended up in a jail cell in Claremont. Years, 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 years this took. For me to break down finally to have the gift of desperation guys it took years and for me this is why the story ranks true is because in that jail cell i realized like man there's nothing there's nothing out there that the world has to offer for me that i need a new way of life and i did at that moment i got up and i walked in another direction i have continued to for almost three years and i feel like when i came back to the lord he celebrated the fact that I was going to come back to him because he knew that I wouldn't walk away anymore, guys. You understand that I had worldly pleasures and then they all ran dry. And now I walk into a, I walk into a whole nother direction with the Lord. You guys, my soul and everything I have in my spirit clings to God, guys. I do not want to be one second away from him because I already know through experience where my will takes me. You understand? So that's what we all know. And it's like the story of most humans, guys. We don't want to be, our flesh wants to fight the fact of, of, of walking with the Lord. We want to fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. And this is most humans. And we walk away from the Lord and we go and see what it's like out there. And some people never come back, guys. Some people wander their whole entire lives, guys. And that's, that's because they didn't choose to walk with God. They chose to do the other thing, guys. And I know I didn't want to do that, guys, because I was at 37 years old and I looked in the mirror and I looked like a skeleton. And I was thinking to myself, when you get older in a methamphetamine addiction, most of the older guys that are inside that addiction, they're dying at like 50 to 55. They're not living much longer than that. They're having heart problems, guys. So I'm sitting here thinking like, dude, I'm 37. I only got like 13 years left to live. And the first 37 went by in the blink of the eye. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They say that, that, that um, 
Our life, if you take a string from one side of the room to the other and you put our life on it, it's like this much, guys. That's our life to eternity. You know what I mean? And, and I feel that, guys. I feel that life flies by and I don't want to be on my deathbed, first of all, screaming, scared, and crying that I don't know where I'm going to go. You know, I want it to be a peaceful experience. You know what I'm saying? And second of all, I don't want to be right here sitting on, on my deathbed and looking and being like, okay, I should have ended up over there, but I ended up over here. Right now, my uh, my conscience is aligned with God's will, and I'm so thankful for that. And I wanted to share that story because it's powerful, guys, and it relates it relates to everybody. You know, you, we walk away from the Lord, and when we come back, we realize what He's done for us, and we we want to just shout from the rooftops, as I like to say, because. I know that I would have out, been out there wandering, and who knows, because of fentanyl, I probably would have been dead, man. They're putting that drug in everything. So it makes doing drugs deadly as it's ever been, ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if you watch the guys that make it on the shows, like on the Vice shows, the cartel guys, man, they don't care about you. All they care about is the money. They don't care who dies. They don't care, guys. They don't care. So it's time to continue to start walking with the Lord, guys. All right, I'm going to read out of this book. It's called From the Inside Out. It's my grace book from uh, Max Licato, all right? Because we want to build ourselves from the inside out, guys. We want to build ourselves from the inside out, and that's the foundation of the rock, okay? It says right here, it says, From the inside out, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, the Spirit of the truth. Now you're walking with the Spirit of the truth, or the Holy Spirit, guys. And as you continue to walk, you will recognize this. You will be able to recognize this. It might be very foreign at first, but you will recognize this. And through experience, the first day I was in the Sally, I didn't know if I wanted to walk with the Lord or not. I thought some of the guys with their hands up and stuff, I thought it was crazy. But now I'm the guy in the church with the hands up, loving the Lord, bringing in the Spirit, ushering the Holy Spirit in now. Because I believe that this is the truth and this is the way. Okay? Do it yourself, Christianity. We can't do it ourselves. It's not much encouragement to... To, to the done in and worn out, okay? Self-sanctification holds little hope for the addict, okay? At some point, we need more than good advice. We need help somewhere on this journey home. We realize that a 50-50 proposition is too little. We need more. We got to be all in, guys. We need help. Help from the inside out. Not near us, not above us, not around us, but in us. In the part of us we don't know, even know. In the heart. No one else has seen in this in the in the hidden re, in the he, hidden recesses of our being dwells not an angel, not a philosophy, not a genie, but God. When God whispers your name, guys, we were built in the image of God, okay? And he knows us and we deep down we long for a relationship and the relationship with the Lord is something that we create in our mind and it goes into our hearts, guys. And we continue to walk with him and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper. I continue to work the steps because the 12 steps is a way to get deeper and deeper into this whole spiritual thing, guys. Like I said, when I went to the Salvation Army, everybody wanted to get to the gym, work out at the gym. They wanted to get girls. You know what I'm saying? I continue to work on my spirit. And now I have reaped the benefits of this. And now I continue to put God first. And now in my mind, there's nothing else on this planet that is more worthwhile than putting God first. Because when God's first, anything else that trickles down is just a blessing, guys. And then what really honestly happens is that you become the blessing. So imagine everybody in a room waiting for a blessing. And then you walk into that room and then you are the blessing. You're the one that God sent there to show them that Sobriety is possible, and it's probably the best feeling in the world. And you line your conscience up with God, and there's nothing better to be walking in your purpose. And it's the biggest blessing of all, guys, okay? Hey, it's a new year, all right? Things are going to be great this year, guys. Things are looking up, all right? It might be hard today, but you're better today than you were yesterday, guys. We cannot stumble on something behind us. We have to start to be able to seize the moment, okay? Have future, have faith in your future. Know God's going to take care of you and become the best person you can be in the moment. And I promise you guys, things will turn over for the good. He will work everything out for your good. Even though your flesh might want to jump off, stay on the course. Read the Proverbs. 
See the roadmap to success, guys. Continue to walk in the light with the Spirit. Most powerful thing I've ever heard in my entire life, guys. Let's have a great day. Let's get some rest in the Spirit today, and let's enjoy the whole week, guys. This is Monty. Let's choose to be able to choose God's will just for today because today matters. Thank you, guys.